Hey ladies, I wanted to chat with y'all a little bit today about self-care. I'm going to try to adjust this, but the problem is my little doohickey that holds my phone decided to break so it could fall at any moment. And y'all know there's always something every time I try to do a video, there's always something that happens. So just wait for it. I'm sure that the rooster will crow or the dogs will bark any minute now. So. I asked a couple days ago, or yesterday, I don't know when. Anyway, I asked some of you ladies, like, what is it that you think of when you think of self-care? Yeah, I'm starting to go wonky. Um, what is it that you think of when you hear self-care, and what does it mean to you? Um, all that jazz. And since the name of my community is Self-Care for Grieving Women, uh, it makes sense that I should probably come around and discuss self-care specifically um, once in a while. And it's been a while. So um, I'm, that's what we're going to talk about today. So if this is your first time um, seeing me and uh, hearing me, my name is Molly Howes. I'm the founder of howsyourhelp.com. And um, I am a health coach and a grief mentor. And I help specifically help grieving women to take good care of themselves um, health-wise health and wellness, but more importantly, spiritually, mindfully, and um, working through the grieving process together. So that's a little bit about me, and I'm going to go ahead and get into our topic for today, which is self-care, and hopefully somebody can hop on and tell me that you can actually hear me. I'm going to continue, though, as if you can hear me and hope for the best, and maybe somebody will give me a thumbs up um, or something here shortly. So y'all know I try to take some notes to keep myself on track, otherwise I will squirrel all over the place, so I'm going to try to follow my notes as much as I can. Um, I'm a little hot and sweaty now that I tried to fight with my camera or my phone. All right, so um, the first thing I want to say is I don't think of self-care as just this... Um, Zen thing that we do, um, spending a lot of time on yourself and neglecting other areas of your life, like neglecting your, um, you know, your family, your jobs, your responsibilities, just because you're working on your self care. Um, it's not, it's not like ignoring your problems, you know, and just sweeping them under the rug um, while you go get your nails done. That is not what self care is. So I want to go ahead and like. Um, go ahead and like eliminate, I guess maybe that, um, stigma. I don't know. There's a word I'm trying to think of, but I can't think of what it is, but you know, people just assume things about self-care, um, and what it means. So I want to go ahead off the bat and just say, it is not like these, um, massage days, spa days, things like that, where you're just pretending that your problems don't exist and you're off having a good time. And then when you come back, everything will be just fine. It doesn't work that way. So um, it's not something that we um, just treat ourselves to once in a while and then get back to reality, right? Because, you know, like when, we're, when you're stressed to the, max, to the max, and what grieving woman is not stressed to the max already, right? Um, just getting a massage is not going to fix things. It's not going to help you move through your hard stuff. It's not going to help you heal um, in and of itself. So, hey, I see some eyeballs. Let me know. Can you guys hear me all right? Can you just give me like a thumbs up or something? I'm not seeing any comments, so I'm kind of nervous that you can't even hear me. So I'm going to hop right in. Okay, so what is it? So what is self-care then, right, if it's not, if it's not those things? Um, so these are things that I believe self-care is. I believe that it is... Um, taking the time for yourself to just be, to connect with yourself, right? Not just doing the things, but to actually take the time to connect with yourself. Um, I believe it is believing that your time is valuable, that your time... Hi, Tammy. Thank you. Um, I hope you can hear me. Um, it's taking, it's believing that your time is valuable, right? It's that your time is just as valuable as everyone else's, all the people that you take care of all the time that you give your time to, right? Um, and you exert yourself for that they are, that your time, yourself, you're worthy of that time as well. Awesome. Thank you, Tammy. I appreciate it. Um, and I also believe it is giving your mind and body time to rest and rejuvenate. And it's just as important as getting all of the to-do things done on your list, if that makes sense. 
Um, I believe it's taking steps to protect and nurture your health, to learn to love yourself, to identify your needs, and take the steps to, to meet them, to meet your needs. Does that make sense? Um, I, um, you know, my thing is self-care. My, my, the thing that I was, that I noticed that, that, that was the hardest for me after my daughter died was self-care. The thing that I needed help the most with was self-care, right? So this is why I'm so passionate about what is it? How do you do it? And how I can help y'all like figure it out too, okay? So, um, so we, you know, we talk about pouring out of our cup for others. Um, so there's like, I think of the illustration of like your families around you, your job, your friends, your responsibilities, your obligations, your volunteering, all of these things. And so like you're a cup and you've got so much love and energy and, and stuff in you and you see all the people that need you. And so you pour yourself, you pour yourself out, right? Well, eventually what's going to happen if you keep pouring yourself out, well, eventually your, your cup's going to be empty. Okay. I wish that I could, um, remember where I saw this or heard this. And if, if you, if you've heard it or seen it, you can, you know, share, share it because I didn't write it down, um, where I heard this, but this is, this was like such a, a an amazing, like aha moment for me. So someone said, instead of envisioning ourselves as a cup that we pour ourselves out for others, instead be a vase. And so, um, if we're a vase, and we're filling up our vase, and instead of tipping it out, we just continue to fill it up until what happens? What happens if you just keep pouring and pouring and pouring water into a vase? Eventually, it's going to overflow. So what if instead of trying to be a cup and we're pouring into everyone else around us, we are a vase and we pour into ourselves and pour and pour and pour and pour into ourselves until what we're pouring into ourselves overflows naturally onto everyone else around us. Does that make sense? Let me know if that, if that makes sense, if you're, you're, you're feeling me, because that was such an aha moment for me that was like, this is what matters. This is why taking care of ourselves matters, and it's not selfish. It's actually the right thing to do to take care of yourself so that then it overflows to everyone else around you, right? Okay. Um, so here's the thing. So there's some, some red flags that you might, um, just a few like things that you, you might need to realize that you're not like, um, taking good care of yourself. So if you're not getting enough sleep, um, if you're exhausted and you're overwhelmed, you're saying yes to all the demands of everyone around you, you have stress related health issues, you're drinking and you're binging and you're using drugs to escape your stress, to escape your grief, to escape your feelings. Um, those are like red flags that you're not taking good care of yourself, right? I mean, there's more, but this was just my quick and dirty list. So self-care is not a distraction from the realities of our life. Self-care is not... Um, um, for keeping us from really digging in and figuring out why we're stressed and what's going on. And y'all know I'm all about digging in and getting in touch with your feelings. The things that have helped me the most, um, the work that I have done the most is working on my beliefs and my feelings and getting to the root of it, right? Getting to the root of what the problem is, what it is, why do I believe what I believe related to anything in life, but specifically related to my grief, related to the death of my daughter. What is it that I'm stuck where I'm stuck and I can't move past this specific thing, okay? It's super hard, really, really hard, but it's worth it if you're willing to do the work. Does that make sense? Um, so, like, I mean, I love me a good Epsom salt bath, and um, that's something that I do almost every night, but um, it's, that's, that's, that in and of itself is not going to fix my problems. You know what I mean? I mean, now magnesium and all that, it does help me sleep better and sleeping better does help me have more energy the next day and help. And so it does, it, it is a tool in my self-care arsenal, but it's not in and of itself the solution, if that makes sense. Um, 
So another thing is um, I always like I suggest getting off of social media as an act of self-care. But why? And it's not just about freeing up that time that you can then use for other things like journaling and meditation and, you know, yoga or going for a run or, you know, taking the time to, to prep some meals for the week. Like it's not just about freeing up that time, but it's because social media, it, it affects our brains and it changes our brains. And also emotionally, it makes us feel, it makes us feel less than. Um, it makes us feel like competitive. And it also can make us super sad and fearful because we see, you know, we see two ends of the spectrum. We see people that's lives are perfect and we're jealous, or we see tragedy after tragedy after tragedy and hate, and it makes us sad and fearful. We don't need to see all of that every day, day in and day out, right? We don't need that. We don't need the news. Not, 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 that doesn't help us heal. So, so, uh, yeah, so self care activities are not solutions to our problems um, because we still have to deal with it. We still have to deal with our feelings. We still have to deal with what's going on in our lives um, head on in order to heal. But I've got a few tips just because I'm always going to give you some tips that hopefully you can at least just take one thing and start using it every day and it can become um, it can become a habit um, that you add to right? And also I'm going to go and check too where some of you ladies um, commented on my question and, um, and, and address that too. So I'm going to get to that in a minute too. So the first thing is um, feeding yourself food that fuels you and makes you feel energized. And I'm not talking about like <laughs> going from eating three meals a day at McDonald's to eating nothing but salads every day. I'm talking about small changes that you can implement, small habits that you can create over time that eventually lead to you making choices that you feel really good about. Because, you know, if we change everything at once, if you're like me, you change everything at once, you can't keep up. You know, if you go from like not exercising at all and now you're like, I'm going to run a marathon, that's not really um, realistic. Um, do what you need to do to get more sleep at night or if you figuring out how much sleep you really need because maybe you're getting too much sleep. Maybe you're sleeping too much and your body is going to be continue to be sluggish. So figuring it out, figuring it out what it is that you need for sleep. Do you need more sleep? Do you need less sleep? Um, and making it a, um, making it, making it, um, trying to get to where you're doing that every single night. Like every single night you're getting the same amount of sleep, if that's making sense. I think I'm trying, I know what I'm trying to say. Um, having that consistency, your body can regulate. There we go. I think that's what I meant. Take naps if you need to. I love me a good nap if I can get it. Um, taking a walk every day, no matter how short it is. Like, um, you know, I've talked about this before. Like just because I don't have time to, you know, for an hour for a workout doesn't mean I can't take a walk, maybe do some squats and some lunges or something, you know, but I can do something to get, um, get the blood pumping and, um, you know, give my body just, you know, a little bit, just a little bit of attention. And honestly, like taking that walk could be the time that you also meditate. Um, uh, multitasking our self-care activities is totally okay. Like you can do both. Um, dance around the house to your favorite music if you're, you know, needing a, needing a pick me up. Um, <laughs> that's totally a self-care activity. And in my family, um, there is always singing. Uh, it doesn't matter where, public or private, we're going to bust out in song. Or I might. It might just be me. But uh, my whole family will bust out in song. Uh, they just might not do it as freely as I will. But that's um, something that I just, you know, I just love to do. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Y'all hear me. I've said this before. If you've heard me at all, um, I'm all about drinking water. It is such a cheap and easy way to give your body what it needs to do the work that it does, that it needs to do. Um, we, you know, if you haven't heard that bo our bodies are like 70% water, it's, it's science. We need water. Drink your water. Um, journaling. I'm all about the journaling. Y'all know I'm all about the journaling. That is, to me, the easiest way 
to start working on your healing, um, to, you know, the emotions that you're stuck on, you just get out your, you know, get it, get it all out, just write like a crazy person, just get it all out there. And, um, and you'll start to see things, you'll start to see patterns and start to figure out what it is you need to work on. Because sometimes it's a feeling like, I don't know what my problem is. I don't know what I'm stuck on, right? But you just start writing, I promise it'll come out. Um, taking steps to change your situation if you are unhappy. We cannot bring our loved one back from the dead. However, we can make the best of what we have left with our life. We can still have a life that is fulfilling with the those around us who are still alive as well, right? For me, I still have a husband and other children. And there's no reason for me to... There's not... There's nothing good that will come of me not trying to do the best that I can to be a great example and honor my daughter and live a life that she would be proud of. Um, the, the opposite of that is just, well, what does that say? You know, when I'm dead, what are people going to say? They'll be like, well, yeah, I mean, after her daughter died, she just crawled in a hole, you know. I, I don't want that. I want to be, I will be the person who helps my daughter's light continue to shine in the world and I will not let her name disappear. I will not let her memory disappear. So that is one of the changes that I'm making, one of the things that I'm working on every day. Um, but it could also be something like your job or relationships or your weight. And we just wanna sit and complain about it and we don't actually wanna do anything to change it because change is scary, but it might be necessary. You might have to do that if you actually want to start healing. If you are seriously gonna start taking better care of yourself, like that is a legit self-care issue. Um, reading, making the time to read. Um, there's, I mean, there's a gajillion books out there. You can read, you can do audio books if you, if you struggle, but practicing reading, um, it, so it stimulates your brain and it improves your memory and your focus and your concentration. So think about it. Think about the last time that you were able like just to sit still for five minutes and sometimes being out of the habit of reading, especially if you don't have to do it anymore because you're not in school anymore, it can be hard to make yourself stop and focus and pay attention to the words, right? But it's a good activity. It's a good practice for that. Plus, you know, if you have something fun to read, something that's lighthearted that can get you out of yourself, um, there's lots of, like, I love historical fiction um, and literature books that are, um, that, you know, get you out of your head and um, relax you. And also, if you do it before bed, it can be something that your body gets used to before, you know, your before bed ritual routines that get you ready to go to sleep. Um, spending time with animals, y'all, if you don't have a fur baby, I mean, if you can't, if you live where you can't have a fur baby, then go hang out at the shelters or something where you can spend some time with some animals. Because we know that spending time with animals reduces your blood pressure, it relieves, it relieves, relieves stress. I mean, even though it was a little bit stressful when I was trying to make my video the other day and Rusty was like, trying to get in my lap. And if y'all haven't seen that or you haven't met Rusty, he's our mule um, that just basically lives in our front yard and knocks on the door when he wants breakfast and um, follows you around like a puppy. And he's so annoying, but I feel so um, peaceful around him. I love to pet him and hug him and brush him and scratch his ears and the things that make him feel good. Um, it's just, it's very healing and stress relieving to spend time with him. Plus y'all know I have like 11,000 other animals that um, I have more than enough to go around, but it's legit. This is a legit self-care activity. You heard it here. Um, do something that you enjoy. So picking up a hobby that you've neglected um, or that you miss doing um, or maybe a new hobby that you've always wanted to try, like making yourself make time for things like that, um, it's, it's helpful. Like I said, these are little steps that help you to start retraining yourself to get out of your own way. Does that make sense? Um, get out of your own way and to make yourself put these things, put yourself up on the list of your priorities. Um, do not stay alone all the time. I'm a homebody. 
Um, I'm never alone because of, you know, my kids are home with me and my husband. But we, um, we can tend to stick in that, like, alone time to the point where we feel isolated. Instead of it being comforting to us to be alone and have our quiet time, it's actually isolating. Um, so making the effort to spend time with friends, the ones that lift you up, not the ones that drag you down or that treat you like you should be in a different place now, um, and spending time with your, you know, your family, um, making memories, right? Making that effort to do those things. Again, it's these baby steps that help you start to shift, shift your focus, shift your feelings, and move you in that direction, and it just becomes like a snowball effect. Um, meditation. So I like to do um, a little bit of mindful meditation after a quick yoga session in the morning. And that's a thing that I have to make myself do. Um, I'm not sure if I've talked about this with y'all yet, but there's a um, book by Mel Robbins called The Five Second Rule. And she basically launches herself into an activity. So before your brain has a chance to tell you not to. So for me, um, it's saying, okay, in the morning, I want it. This is what I want to do. This is what I want my morning routine to look like. And so I will get up and I will do my yoga, even if it's five or 10 minutes, and then use that time to meditate and to set my intention for the day, right? To go ahead and be mindful and set my intention for the day. And it changes everything if I do that. If I, if the first thing I do when I wake up is look at my phone and get on social media, first of all, I'm going to get, you know, depressed and sappy and whatever. Or I'm going to get totally distracted by something and just squirrel off into who knows what. Um, usually I find like blog posts I want to read. And next thing I know, it's been an hour and... I've wasted all that time. Um, so that's how I use meditation. You can meditate anytime and it can just be five minutes or 10 seconds. I mean, it's something that you work up to and I totally believe in it because again, we need to reconnect with ourselves. Um, that is the thing that we are lacking is this actual connection to our mind and our body and our spirit and paying attention to what it's trying to tell us. Um, gratitude. So, Again, journaling can, um, can help us figure out our gratitude. Um, sometimes it's really hard to find what we're grateful for, right? To figure out what we're grateful for. And journaling can help whenever we feel like we're stuck and there's nothing good and there's nothing to be grateful for. Um, but this gives us, it gives us such a perspective shift to, to find gratitude. Here, I'm going to show you guys. I finally remembered to wear my gratitude shirt. See? Oh, sorry. I don't want to give you like a major chesty shot. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so this shirt, I'm going to put the link. I'm going to have to go find it. But I'm going to put the link in there. So there's an amazing family that whenever you buy these shirts that say gratitude, um, the money, the proceeds go 100% to them being able to buy and give um, Tom Zuba's books to families for free. And so um, Tom Zuba, I've mentioned him before, and I happen to actually have his books right here next to me. Permission to Mourn, and his newest book, Becoming Radiant. So this family, um, because his books have been so powerful, um, this that's what this family wanted to be able to do, is to um, use the proceeds from these shirts to gift families with copies of his book um, whenever they hear of someone whose um, loved one has died. And... Um, I just, I think that's, a, it's a super, it's, I mean, I couldn't help it buy a shirt. It's a, it's a fantastic and very simple way for us to support other grieving people. So I'm going to, um, I'll hook you up with the link after I finish the video and, um, you can check it out. And also I, I recommend going to Amazon and finding Tom's books as well, because, um, they are, they are among the top of books that I have read that have been, amazing to help me shift my beliefs, right? Because we have been told by society that, uh, that grief looks a certain way, it's supposed to be a certain way, and it doesn't, that doesn't feel right. So to have the um, confirmation from someone else that you're allowed to grieve the way that you want to grieve, right, and how to do it uh, is so powerful. So that's my plug. That's my plug for the shirt. That's my plug for Tom and his books. And I'll, like I said, I'll come back and add that to the comments after I'm through here. 
Um, and that's also another that leads into volunteering for a cause. So most of the time I find that there's some powerful causes, powerful programs that have been created by families whose child has died or their mom has died or someone has died and it has catapulted them to raise money for cancer research, to raise money for rare diseases uh, research, to raise money for suicide awareness, to raise money for you name it. Um, it has, it, it, it catapults us into action. And if that's something that you, it, you might not feel like you can start your own foundation, but you can find a foundation that you can work with, right? That, that, um, meets that need that you have for whatever cause is on your heart. And doing that is self care because you're serving others is one of the best things that you can do to get out of your own way and to heal. Um, and so let's see, deciding what matters to you, regardless of what other people say should matter to you or what they say matters to them, you, you know, if it feels right or if it feels wrong, right? Like, you know, so it's up to you to stick to that, right? And to dig in and to figure it out and to, um, to, to stand up for yourself. And that's another thing too, that this community means so much to me because of the fact that I have elected myself to be, you know, like an advocate for grieving women that we have the right to grieve the way we want to grieve. We have the right to let people go. If they're not willing to stay with us, let them go. Um, and to, you know, to, to reach out to other grieving women to say that, you know, I'm here, you're not alone. Right. And sticking to what matters to you, um, it's so hard, I think, for us to be authentic these days. I think it's so hard for us to stick to our guns and to stand up for ourselves because it feels like somebody's always going to tell you you're wrong. And, you know, on social media, we tend to, people, you know, tend to just say whatever they feel because you can, it's almost like you're, you know, you're anonymous. And so there's so much, there's so much of that um, hate and there's so much judgment and stuff out there. And so it's very difficult to feel like it's okay for you to stand up for yourself and to stick to your beliefs, right? But when you're not being true to yourself, you're definitely not taking care of yourself because you're not being honest with yourself. You're not being yourself. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, I'm going to read the comments that the ladies left uh, for my when I asked about self-care. Let's see. So Laura had said she knows it's essential to take care of herself, but she's having a hard time with depression. And she wants to be involved in things that she used to be interested in or used to find joy in, but she just isn't. That's just, it's non-existent. She doesn't know how to break out of this. The simplest tasks become overwhelming and getting through the day with just the have tos is all that she can muster up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does that sound familiar to anybody else that's watching? Because, um, I'm going to say that no matter how many years it's been since your loved one has died, how many days, weeks, months, years it's been, you're going to have days like this. And my advice is lean into it. There's times when self-care is just doing the bare minimum because the guilt for me personally and for a lot of ladies I've talked to, the guilt of feeling like you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing or you feel like you're not moving fast enough or you're not doing enough or you're not far enough along that guilt just pushes you that much further off the path of healing does that make sense so yeah I mean it makes sense that you're feeling depressed it makes sense that you you know you only have enough energy to get done what you have to get done but that's okay so letting go of the guilt of the fact that you're not doing what you feel like you should be doing is like the first step to taking care of yourself, right? And then just being prepared when you do have the time. You know, I've said this before. When I do have the energy, then I'll go grocery shopping. And when I do have the energy and the time, then I'll, you know, maybe make some meals ahead and stick them in the freezer. For those days when all I can do is the bare minimum, that I know I have something prepared. Or to not be afraid to, you know, text my husband and be like, can you pick up a bag of tacos? Because I'm not getting out of bed today. 
you know, there, there's, there is time and there are days where you just have to be okay with doing the bare minimum and it's okay. Um, so Kelly had said, the more I care my, for myself and just basic things such as eating, sleeping, showering, combing my hair, brushing my teeth, meditating and exercising, the more I'm able to take care of the needs of my family. I cannot give from an empty bank account. Yeah. And I need to deposit money daily through the act, through each act of self-care and compassion I give serving my needs so that I have money to draw upon when I want to help others with their needs. I really like this analogy. Obviously, it sounds like it's just like my the analogy that I mentioned earlier about um, filling up the vase until it's overflowing. This is so you can visualize this, right? Like you're, if you, if you have money in your bank account and you just keep spending and spending and spending it, you know, eventually you're going to get overdrawn. There's not going to be any more money left, right? So she's putting money into the bank in these ways that she's taking care of herself. So I really like that, Kelly. That's, that's a really awesome, um, visualization. Let's see here. Um, Jennifer said right now, self-care is going to work, eating with when I'm hungry without too much judgment about what I eat, doing the dishes, taking out the garbage, cleaning the cat box when I have the energy, sleeping when I can, but it's only three to four hours um, at a time generally. So yeah, the thing is, is recognizing it. And like I said, letting go of the guilt, that should have been number one. I probably should have put that as number one, like letting go of the guilt of whatever it is that if I say you should be doing and you're not doing it and now you feel guilty that you're not doing it, right? Number one, let go of the guilt. Immediately, let, let go of the guilt about your feelings because your feeling, all your feelings are valid. If you've not watched any of my other videos, I highly recommend that you go back um, wherever you're watching from. You should be able to see more videos and click there and find the videos because so much of this is stuff that I've touched on already and I feel like some of this, it, and I go into a little bit deeper, into specific things a little bit deeper, I feel like there'll be something there that resonates with you because um, guilt is one of the things that I've touched on. Um, but so she's saying, um, not feeling guilty about, or not, not judging herself for what she's eating. And that's, that, there's just, we feel guilty about everything as women. I don't know what it is. We feel guilty if we, you know, feel like we're not eating the way we should. We're not working out as much as we should. Our houses aren't as clean as they should be. Uh, all the things, all the things we feel so guilty about. And then so adding grief on top of that, it's just, it's, there's no way you can win right? There's no way you can win if you're feeling guilty about all of the things that you feel like you should be doing or whatever. Um, so yeah, so doing the bare minimum, like when you have the energy doing what you're able to do when you have the energy and then not feeling guilty when you don't have the energy, not feeling guilty about it. I do not feel guilty. Well, that could be a lie. I don't care enough about whether or not my house is clean to make myself use my limited energy to clean it all the time. Does that make sense? Anybody else feeling that? You feeling me? I do not have enough. I don't care enough. There are certain things that I don't care enough about the result of the activity to use my energy to do that thing all the time. I pick and choose where I put my energy on the thing that matters to me the most, that matters to me the most that day. And, um, and it can change. I can get up in the morning and have the best of intentions about certain things. And then it all comes crashing down because my kid needs me to spend more time on something specific. Or my husband shows up, you know, he gets off of work early and shows up at home. And like, there's th things happen, you know, like we've had cars break down and we've had like, there's just always something, something else that's going to pop up and to be like, okay, well, I was going to do that today, but something came up and it's okay. It's okay that it didn't get done today. Does that make sense? And then let's see. Um, the last one is Paula said, I'm trying to make myself do things I used to enjoy. I love to crochet, but nothing feels good or restoring. And that's okay. That's okay. The thing is, is if you feel like trying it, give it a try. If you don't feel like it, then don't do it. Um, I actually picked up crocheting recently at, for the first time ever. And, um, it's hard. It's really, it's very hard. And my hands and my brain don't talk to each other properly to make it work. But I did manage to make the ugliest egg apron you've ever seen. But I was determined. That's what I wanted to make was an egg apron. Um, I have bought more yarn and I still intend to use this yarn to try again and make another one. But I haven't started yet. And sometimes I'm like, Ugh, I said I was going to start doing that again, but I haven't done it yet. And it's been months and months 
So probably I might have even forgotten what any of the things mean that my sweet, sweet friend was teaching me how to do and had so much patience with me and my just absolute inability to catch on to what she was trying to tell me. So what I'm trying to say again is don't feel guilty or try to release the guilt that the things that you want to do, that you want to get back to doing, that you're not feeling it yet. Um, it will come. It, it, sh it may come eventually. It may not. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. Maybe now you're going to find something else to spend your time with, something else that feels more rejuvenating or restoring to you um, besides, you know, the things that you used to do. Again, that's okay. That's, that's part of what self-care is all about is figuring it out, intentionally figuring out what activities are healing for you and what activities do make you feel like you're moving forward in your healing. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to quit now. I'm going to, I'm sure, I feel like I've been rambling forever at this point. Um, so, you know, we have to do these things regularly for it to be effective. It can't be just like, so you think about like, I worked out once or I ate, or I ate a salad today. I should have like six pack abs tomorrow, right? We know that's not realistic. It's the same thing with self-care and with healing. Um, it takes time and it takes practice to figure out those activities. What aligns with you and what feels the most helpful. And if it's not aligning with you, you, you don't have to keep trying the same thing. You know what I mean? If you're like, I don't like yoga and I've tried it and I just don't like it, but I would really much rather go for a run. Then you run, girl. You go for your run because I'd rather do yoga than run. Okay? And that's okay. It's okay. So that's it. All right, so let me know um, what you guys think about self-care. Was any of this helpful to you? Um, comment, especially if you're catching the replay. Let me know. Show me some love. Give me some likes. Tell me. Make me, you know, like help me figure out that this is, this is, this is helpful. Y'all are picking up what I'm putting down. Um, and uh, you want me to keep talking <laughs> to you about more stuff. Because um, I really like bringing y'all helpful info, and I would love to know what else y'all would like for me to talk about. Um, like I said, you might find that I've already covered something in a previous video if you go check out some of my older videos. And um, let me know. But let me know if there's something that you haven't seen me share that you would like for me to talk about, and I'll do it. If you are ready to connect and see if we would be a good fit to work together in a coaching um, with my coaching, um, I'm going to share my calendar link. I didn't because I didn't do that yet either. Because I just, like I said, hopped on here with a broken phone stand and did my thing. I'll put my calendar in the link, or I'll put my calendar link in the comments or in the description. I'll put it somewhere. And if you think that this is something that you are ready to do, um, if you are ready to get to have your hand held to get unstuck then we can chat, we can find out if working together is a good fit. Either way, um, it'll be a great call. Uh, ladies that I have chatted with who did not sign up to work with me still had a great, um, an aha moment of some sort. So it's, it's, a, it's a free opportunity for you to maybe get a fresh perspective where you're stuck uh, in your grieving and in your self-care. That's all I have for y'all today. And I love y'all so much. And uh, let me know what you think. Chat with y'all soon. Bye.